Hey everybody, it is your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are continuing topic 6.7 on mutations. Um, well, yeah, we're going to be continuing talking about mutations. And more specifically, we're going to get into mutations in bacteria and uh, how those are important and how bacteria are able to trade, trade genes with each other. It's really kind of crazy how they're able to do that and uh, how they evolve so quickly. Yeah, I said bacteria evolve very, very quickly. And why is that? Well, um, it's, well, we're going to talk about it in this video. So these first two points that I put on here, mutations can be de detrimental, beneficial, or neutral depending on the environment. Um, and some phenotypes are subject to natural selection and they enhance survival and reproduction. Those two points I already put in the last video, okay, when we were talking about the polar bears, their, their transparent fur allowed them to better blend into their environment um, than their cousins that did not have that trait for transparent fur and thus that gave them a survival advantage, allowed them to, well, survive longer and pass down the trait, that beneficial trait to their offspring. Um, this is the same thing that happens in bacteria except it happens way quicker and it's happening today in a really kind of scary manner as well. All right, so uh, I'm gonna introduce you to a new term here. Uh, a genetic trait that enhances survival and reproduction is selected for by environmental conditions. Okay, so something that we're going to talk about today is antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Um, and so bacteria develop a trait via a mutation to allow them to survive antibiotic treatment. And when antibiotics are applied and they survive it, um, they are then able to replicate and, uh, well, they're able to divide and they're going to pass on that trait to their offspring because, you know, they, they just make copies of themselves, right? Um, so just like I was saying before, antibiotic resistance is selected for in that it gives bacteria an advantage to survive just like the polar bear, uh, the transparent or white fur was selected for um, in that environment. All right, same thing here. This is the basis of natural selection. So why uh, do they evolve quickly? Well, they really do. Um, they have high rates of reproduction. Some E. coli bacteria are able to make a copy of themselves every 20 minutes. So their whole reproductive life cycle is 20 minutes. Um, and they have high rates of mutation as well. Okay, so uh, bacteria, their DNA mutates a lot and they're able to reproduce very, very quickly. So that means antibiotic resistant bacteria are more likely to survive and reproduce, passing on their traits for antibiotic resistance than non-antibiotic resistant strains. So this picture here, I'm gonna come back to it again. Okay, but if we have some bacteria that are highly resistant to antibiotics, okay, and then we apply the antibiotics, the ones that are antibiotic resistant survive, and then they make a new population of all antibiotic resistant bacteria. Kind of scary, right? Um, this is a real thing. Imagine you get some kind of staph infection or like strep throat or something, and uh, or something worse than that. Okay, maybe it's like meningitis, and uh, you get antibiotics and they just don't work. That's a scary thought, and that's becoming a reality around the world, actually. Um, it's a very serious issue. Uh, so how are bacteria so good at evolving and surviving? Well, because they reproduce quickly, because they get mutations quickly, and because they can horizontally acquire new traits, they can just pass genes from one to the next. And there's three ways that they do that. One is through transformation. Um, when the genotype and the possibly the phenotype of a prokaryotic cell are altered by the uptake of foreign DNA from its surroundings. Okay, so um, this is actually something that we're going to be doing in class is we're going to be doing a bacterial transformation. Uh, we're going to grow some bacteria in a medium that contains genes for that allow them to glow, glow in the dark, right? So our bacteria, what they're going to do is since they're growing in this medium, they're going to uptake foreign DNA and they're going to incorporate it into these little circular pieces of DNA called plasmids. And they're going to start expressing the genes um, that they took in from the environment and thus they're going to glow in the dark, right? So bacteria, all bacteria can pretty much do this. They can just pick up genes that are growing in the environment um, and incorporate them into their own into their own plasmids, into their own genome and start expressing them, which is wild if you think about it. Imagine you're just able to pick up a gene and start expressing it um, and alter your phenotype. Um, so yeah, that's something bacteria can do. Another thing that bacteria can do is that they can uh, trade genes with each other through, through viruses, okay? So transduction is when phages, or also known as bacteriophages, um, and they are viruses that infect bacteria, 
carry prokaryotic genes from one cell to another, right? So we, we talked about viruses. We know that viruses, what their job is to drop off some, some of their own DNA, um, like put it into their host DNA. Um, but in the, and when this happens sometimes, uh, the viruses, the new viruses that are produced are carrying some of the host cell's DNA too. Um, so, what, so when these new viruses take up some of the host cell's DNA and they spread out to other cells, right, they're carrying some of that cell's DNA with it, okay, so that all the other cells that they infect are also getting a little bit of the original cell's DNA. And once again, bacteria are able to trade um, genes in this manner, okay. And here's another thing about a virus. Multiple viruses can recombine a genome if they infect the same cell. Okay, so if you get multiple viruses on one cell, they can, you know, and the same thing can happen. This transduction can occur and they can kind of shuffle um, viral, or excuse me, they can kind of shuffle bacterial genomes with each other and you can get re new combinations of genes as a result of multiple viruses infecting the same cell. Okay, so this same thing can happen where, you know, they go through their life cycle, take up a little bit of the pro, uh, bacteria's DNA, um, and send it to another bacteria, but that, if that can happen twice, you can recombine a genome entirely, uh, which is kind of crazy. It's really crazy. Bacteria are, they're amazing. They're very, very successful um, as living things, and there's a reason for that. Okay, and another way, one more way that bacteria can exchange genes is that they can just form a tube with each other and then just transfer them. That's it, that's called conjugation. DNA is transferred between two prokaryotic cells that are temporarily joined. So look at, they literally make a tube um, and then you know one cell's like, hey, check this out, I got a plasmid um, and it's got an awesome gene on it that allows me to resist amoxicillin or something, I don't know, or any other bio antibiotic. Um, and it's gonna just send it over to this guy and check it out. By the end of this, it forms a tube, it sends over that gene, and then look, each bacterial cell has that plasmid, has that little tiny piece of DNA that might have a beneficial gene. Okay, so that's another really, really difficult component about um, antibiotic resistance is that one antibiotic resistance bacterial cell can just send over a gene to its friends through conjugation. It's insane. Uh, so all of these processes, conjugation, transduction and transformation are all possible through plasmids, okay? So plasmids are small rings of independently, I should say independently, replicating a DNA, DNA molecules separate from bacterial chromosomes, right? So if the red ring here are the regular bacterial chromosomes, bacteria can also contain these smaller rings called plasmids, okay? And plasmids are easily transferable from the environment into a bacterial cell, from bacterial cell to bacterial cell, or from a phage to a bacterial cell. All those three processes that we just talked about before. Um, and that's actually what we're going to be looking at. We're going to grow some bacteria um, with a plasmid in its environment. And it's going to take up that plasmid and start expressing that gene. It's going to be awesome. It's, and then it's going to make them glow in the dark, right? Um, okay, so antibiotic resistance develops through natural selection of bacterial cells. This is what I was talking about before. Um, bacteria with a mutation to resist antibiotics survives treatment, reproduces, and thus makes the new population all resistant. So as I spoke about before, we got some a regular population of bacteria. Some of them have antibiotic resistance. And as a result, when the antibiotic is applied, the ones with the resistance are, they survive and they reproduce and they make a new population of all antibiotic resistant bacteria. Not to mention that, you know, if there were some others that survived the treatment, um, they can just pass this gene over through conjugation or through transformation or even through transduction, okay? So that's what makes bacteria tricky to tackle um, when it comes to, you know, bacteria that cause diseases. That'll be it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions, and we will see you next time.